In this lecture, we will be seeing another example of Moore machine. This example is not about construction of Moore machine, but here we are already given a Moore machine and we will try to pass some inputs to this Moore machine and see what are the kind of outputs that it gives. So here is our question. For the following Moore machine, the input alphabet is sigma equal to AB and the output alphabet is delta equal to 0, 1. Run the following input sequences and find the respective outputs. So for this given Moore machine, where the inputs could be anything in A and B and the outputs are anything in zeros and ones and we are given this Moore machine and we have to run the input sequences given here to this Moore machine and try to find out what are the outputs that they give. So, so far we have solved Moore machine using the transition diagrams but in this example we will not draw the transition diagram but from the transition table itself we will try to find out how it works. Okay, so let's take this first example. The first one is A, A, B, A, B. So, we will pass this string into this Moore machine and see what is the output that it gives. So we see here that Q0 is our starting state or the initial state. So we start with Q0 and Q0 is associated to the output 0. So even before we give in the string, this Q0 will produce the output 0. And then we get the first input that is A. What happens if Q0 gets the input A? Q0, if it gets input A, it goes to Q1. Goes to Q1. And what is the output that Q1 produces, Q1 produces the output 0. And then the next input is A and we are in Q1 and in Q1 if you get A it goes to Q2. And what is the output that Q2 produces? 1. Okay, then the next input is B, we are in Q2. In Q2 if we get B it goes to Q4. And what is the output that Q4 produces? It is 0. And then the next input is A and we are in Q4. In Q4 if we get A it goes to Q0. And what is the output that Q0 produces? 0. And in Q0 we get the input B. So if Q0 gets B, where does it go? It goes to Q2. It goes to Q2. And what is the output that Q2 produces? The output that Q2 produces is 1. So for the input sequence A, A, B, A, B, the output that we get is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is the output that it gets. Now let's check for the next one. What is the next one? A, B, B, B. A, B, B, B. Again we start with our initial state that is Q0 and Q0 gives the output 0 even before it gets any input and then the first input is A. Q0 on getting A, where does it go? It goes to Q1. Goes to Q1. And what does Q1 produce? Q1 produces the output 0. And then the next input is B. We are in Q1. Q1 on getting B, where does it go? Q1 on getting B, it goes to Q3. And the output that Q3 produces is 0. And the next input is B. We are in Q3. Q3 on getting B goes to Q4. And what is the output that Q4 produces? It is Look at here, it is 0. And then the next input is B and we are in Q4. In Q4 if you get B, it goes to Q0. And Q0 produces the output 0. So this is the output that we get for A, B, B, B. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, now let's go to the third one. What is the third one? The third one is A, B, A, B, B. A, B, A, B, B. And as usual we start with Q0 which is the starting state and Q0 produces output 0 and then we get our first input A. Q0 on A goes to Q1 producing the output 0. Q1 produces output 0 and then we get the next input B in Q1. In Q1 if we get B it goes to Q3. Okay, and Q3, what is the output that it produces? 0. And then the next input is A. We are in Q3. Q3 on getting A goes to Q4. And what is the output that Q4 produces? Q4 produces 0. And the next input is B. We are in Q4. Q4 on input B goes to Q0. 
Q0 and Q0 produces the output 0 and then the next input is B we are in Q0 Q0 on input B goes to Q2 Q2 and what is the output that Q2 produces Q2 produces the output 1 so for the input sequence A B A B B the output we get is 0 0 0 0 0 1 okay so this is how you get the outputs from the Moore machine on giving certain inputs you can also draw the transition diagram and check it but this is how you solve it using the table itself and one thing that we notice is that whenever we have an input the output is one bit longer than the input so here the input was one two three four five bits and here it is one two three four five six here it was four and the output was five here it was five and the output was six so you'll always get the output as one bit longer than the input why because always in our Moore machine when we start from the starting state there is always an output associated with with that which will be printed even before you give any input so I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.